Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. When I first started out on my skincare journey, one of the first products I reached for was this, the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin 2% Plus Hyaluronic Acid. I was using this to treat my hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration. And honestly, I got some amazing, amazing results. I actually featured this product very early on into the channel. I'll leave a link to that review up there if you do want to check it out. Just promise me you won't read me to fill for the slightly shaky presentation style and the really dodgy editing. In spite of all that, that video actually did really well and a lot of people ask me today why they no longer see the Alpha Arbutin product in my current skincare routine. In truth, it's just because I found some better products to tackle my own hyperpigmentation through trial and error, and that's really what I want to share with you in today's video. So, sit back, relax, and let's talk the ordinary Alpha Arbutin. Now, before we get into this video, I'd like to issue a little bit of a caveat and a disclaimer. I've actually been filming videos here on YouTube for the past two years, and I always feel like I have an obligation to update you guys when my thoughts, feelings, and opinions change on any particular particular product, ingredient, and that's kind of the purpose of this series. However, when I film these videos, there's always some Poindexter down there in the comments saying, you switch up products and ingredients too frequently. One minute you like this product, the next minute you don't like the other. In truth, two years is quite a long period of time in a skincare journey. And I always say it's worth checking the date stamps of any videos because whilst I love, love, love this product when I first tried it two years ago, a lot has happened since then. And I always want to be totally honest and transparent with you guys and just share with you my current current thoughts, feelings, opinions, and any better alternatives, which is the real purpose of today's video. I would love to know your thoughts, feelings, and opinions when it comes to Alpha Arbutin, so make sure you sound off in the comments section below. Just promise me that whilst you're down there, you'll do the usual stuff. Subscribe and join our Mad About Skin family if you haven't already, and leave this video a big thumbs up and a like. Gently caress that like button to support me in the channel, because honestly, it means the world to me, and you guys know it. I love you all so, so much. Now, with all that being said, shall we just cut the waffle and delve straight on in? and I guess the best place to start is what is alpha arbutin? Well, it's a precursor to hydroquinone, which is a super scientific way of saying it helps to suppress the pigment production in the skin. Melanin, which is the skin's natural pigment, is like a defense mechanism against everything the world throws at us. When our skin is stressed, it might be irritated, inflamed, or subject to trauma, our skin's response will be to produce excess melanin, which then pulls in uneven distributions across our skin, leading to hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration. I think it's something we'll all experience at some point in our skincare journey, and some people are more susceptible to hyperpigmentation than others. In terms of how to treat it, there are a lot of brands, there are a lot of ingredients and products that claim to help to tackle dark spots and discoloration, and in truth, a lot of them don't really show a lot of benefits. I reached for the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin on this promise, and I got some really, really good results. I'd say having used it for around three months, I saw a 20% improvement in my hyperpigmentation. This is pretty good, because honestly, hyperpigmentation is one of the trickiest things to treat. It's also the number one reported skin complaint that we all have. A 20% improvement was certainly a benefit to me and my skin confidence, but I kind of felt I was wanting a little bit more. I then started experimenting with other active ingredients that claim to help treat hyperpigmentation and discoloration. And this, I think, is what ultimately has led me to no longer reach for Alpha Arbutin in my skincare routine. The truth is, I've just found some more effective active ingredients that deliver me far in excess of the benefits I was getting from the ordinary Alpha Arbutin. I'd say through incorporating other active ingredients, I've now seen a 90% reduction in my hyperpigmentation. This wasn't a quick win. It's taken me two years to achieve this, but through a combination of different active ingredients, ingredients, I've been able to deliver that for my own skincare routine, and I no longer reach for the Alpha Arbutin that I used to. I think that Alpha Arbutin is a fantastic like, gateway into hyperpigmentation treatment. You do get those great results, and I'll leave an image of my start point with hyperpigmentation here. You also don't get a lot of side effects, redness, and irritation from Alpha Arbutin. It's very well tolerated, so a lot of people out there that might be worried of some of the side effects from some of these higher potency hyperpigmentation treatments, can rest assured that Alpha Arbutin in most people won't create any of them. Make sure you patch test first, but it's a really nice way of segueing into some more active ingredients. That's kind of what I want to come onto in this section of the video, the active ingredients that led to me moving away from Alpha Arbutin. First and foremost was tranexamic acid. Honestly, this was like a revelation when I discovered it. Tranexamic acid is fantastic because it has a two-pronged approach to tackling hyperpigmentation. Very similar to Alpha Arbutin, it suppresses the rate of pigment production to start with. This is fantastic because our skin will naturally turn itself over once every 28 days, taking with it some of the excess pigment that's accumulated. 
If you're eradicating the excess pigment and then not replacing it in the same quantity, over a period of time our complexion will appear more bright. It'll also help to fade some of those dark spots and discoloration. You'll get this from both tranexamic acid and alpha arbutin. And similar to alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid is also super gentle and well tolerated. The reason I think it is like a step up from alpha arbutin is because it's also anti-inflammatory. One of the biggest triggers for excess produ pigment production in the skin is inflammation. This triggers the melanocytes which produce that melanin to go into overdrive and causing that hyperpigmentation. So anything that we can use to suppress the rate of inflammation in the skin will have a benefit to hyperpigmentation, dark spots and discoloration. This is kind of what you get with tranexamic acid. It calms and soothes irritated skin but it also suppresses the rate of pigment production. This I think is why it's a step up from alpha arbutin. I then continued along my skincare journey and stumbled upon azelaic acid which honestly was such such the best discovery in terms of my own skin. So whereas I said that tranexamic acid had like a two-pronged attack to fighting hyperpigmentation, azelaic acid has a four-pronged attack. It is a game-changingly good active ingredient. These four prongs to it, the way that it tackles hyperpigmentation are these. So first and foremost, like with tranexamic acid, it suppresses the rate of pigment production in the first place. It also increases the rate of cellular turnover. This is great because you'll be eradicating that excess pigment quicker, which just means it speeds up the amount of results that we'll get. It also suppresses the rate of acne causing bacteria on the skin. So if your hyperpigmentation is as a result of breakouts or acne, azelaic acid is like a non-negotiable in your skincare routine. Mine certainly is and I've noticed since incorporating azelaic acid I get fewer breakouts and therefore have less hyperpigmentation in general. A fourth way that it works is also an anti-inflammatory. It calms and soothes the skin. This again is fantastic because like with tranexamic acid, the calmer and less inflamed our skin is, the less likely it is to pigment, which again is just a great way of tackling all of the bases. You can actually use tranexamic acid and azelaic acid together. These two are like best friends. They pair beautifully well together. They don't increase the amount of sensitivity or irritation you'll get from either of them. And I definitely, definitely would recommend if you haven't tried it already, combining these two in your skincare routine because I think this is where I really started to see those game-changing results from my own discoloration. I covered how to layer these two powerful actives in a recent video, which I'll leave a link to up there. Definitely one to check out. But I feel that combining these two plus the use of vitamin C derivatives derivatives which also brighten and eradicate excess pigment have really just transformed the way I see my skin and delivered some game-changing results for my hyperpigmentation. I like to see skincare as a journey. You know we start with this point and then through trial and error recommendations we end up with a routine that matches our skin to perfection. Hopefully in this video I've been able to explain that whilst I don't currently use the ordinary alpha arbutin 2% in my own skincare routine it's actually a fantastic fantastic active ingredient and product particularly if you're starting out on your hyperpigmentation pigmentation journey. I just believe there's better actives out there and combinations of actives that will deliver us the results that we need in a shorter time frame. I would love to know your own thoughts, feelings and opinions on hyperpigmentation treatments and alpha arbutin in general. So sign up in the comments section below and wherever you are in the world guys, stay safe, stay well and love your skin. Take care. Bye.